This video will discuss the fields that make up a patron account in Sitka's Evergreen. The information collected at registration and stored in the patron account will vary from library to library. It is important to know what your library's policies are for creating patron accounts and what information should and should not be collected and recorded by library staff. Some fields can be edited by the patron through My Account in your public catalog. The patron account is made up of required and optional fields. Some fields are set as required by Evergreen. Some fields are set as required by your local system administrator through the library settings editor. Required fields display in yellow. These fields must be filled in before you can save a patron account. The patron account fields display both when registering a patron and on the edit tab within a patron's account. The Patron Account fields can be divided into six sections. Identification, Contact Details, Account Settings, User Settings, Address, and Statistical Categories. The Identification section includes information that identifies who your patron is. Let's go through the fields in this section. Barcode. Generally, this will be a 14-digit code of our barcode using your library's unique numeric prefix. If your library uses barcode completion with an alphabetic prefix, you must ensure that prefix is entered in this field as part of the barcode. OPAC Staff Client Username. By default, the username will match the barcode. Both library staff and patrons can update their username via My Account in your public catalog. Patrons can sign into My Account with either their username or barcode. Library staff must use their username when signing into the staff client. Password. By default, Evergreen will create a random four-digit password for a new account. Libraries can instead choose to use the last four digits of the patron's daytime phone number as the initial password. This is controlled by two library settings, Patron, Password from Phone Number, and Uses Phone as Default PIN. The second library setting changes the text that appears as the password hint when logging into My Account. Library staff should always encourage patrons to update their passwords to something only the patron knows. Evergreen will never show the existing password so if a patron or staff member has forgotten their password, it will need to be reset. For details on how to reset a password, see our video, Resetting a Forgotten Password. Primary Name A first and last name must be entered for all patrons. Prefix title, suffix, and middle name are optional and can be used as needed. Preferred Name the preferred name fields can be used if the patron goes by a name different from their primary name. If there's a preferred name entered, it will be used in notifications to the patron, as well as displaying when the patron logs into My Account. Name Keywords Additional keywords can be entered to group accounts for searching purposes. OPAC Staff Client Holds Alias the OPAC Staff Client's Holds alias can be used if your library has a publicly visible or accessible hold shelf and the patron does not want items on the hold shelf appearing under their real name. Date of Birth If a library collects it, the patron's date of birth can be entered here. This field can be set to be required through the library settings. Juvenile Checkbox the juvenile flag can be used to tag accounts as juvenile for policy and reporting purposes. When a date of birth is entered, Evergreen checks the value for the library setting Juvenile Age Threshold and automatically checks the box if the patron's age falls below the threshold. However, Evergreen does not automatically uncheck the box when the patron's age is above the threshold, and library staff must manually uncheck the box. Co-op support recommends using the juvenile permission groups for policies and reporting needs rather than this juvenile flag. Parent Guardian. This field can be used to indicate the name of a parent or a guardian for a patron. Primary and Secondary Identification. 
The primary and secondary identification fields were originally designed to indicate what type of identification a patron used when registering for library card. However, co-op support recommends against recording details such as a patron's driver's license number in Evergreen. In Sitka, the identification fields are generally used by academic libraries for data such as student number or homeroom. The primary identification type field is required by Evergreen and has been given a Sitka default value of other. Photo URL. The photo URL can be used to link to a picture of a patron stored externally and is a feature designed for use by academic libraries. Additional permissions are required to use this field so please contact Co-op Support if this is a field your library would like to use. Patron Preferred Language Patrons can set English or French as their preferred language. This setting is available to staff through the Patron account and to patrons via My Account. If a patron selects French as their preferred language and a library has email notifications set up in both French and English, then the patron will receive their notifications in French. To set up notifications in French, libraries must provide co-op support with French translations for their notifications. The Contact Details section includes information for contacting your patron. Email address. If a patron would like to receive notifications by email, an email address needs to be entered. This field can be set to be required through the library settings. Multiple email addresses can be entered and must be separated by a comma followed by a space. Patrons can edit their email address through My Account unless the option has been disabled for your library, such as if you use single sign-on. Email checkout receipts by default checkbox. If a patron wants to receive their checkout receipts by email, this checkbox can be checked. Patrons can update this checkbox via My Account. Daytime phone. The daytime phone field is the primary phone number for the patron. This field can be set as required through the library settings. Evening phone and other phone. These are additional fields where a phone number can be entered. The fields can be set as required through the library settings. The account settings section includes settings that control how the account will work for patrons. Home Library. For public libraries, Home Library should always be set to the library whose tax base the patron falls into or the library at which the patron paid for library service as a non-resident. For academic and special libraries, the Home Library should be the library or applicable branch. Main Profile Permission Group. The Main Profile Permission Group is referred to by a few different names. You may hear it called Permission Group or Profile Group or patron type. The list of available permission groups are set globally by library type. There are separate profile groups for public libraries, post-secondary libraries, K-12 libraries, government libraries, and special libraries. Individual libraries can choose which permission groups they want to use and what types of patrons should go into the different groups to suit local policy. Contact Co-op Support to have this list customized to display only the profiles you use at your library. Permission groups are also used for library staff accounts. Permission groups are used by Evergreen to determine how items circulate, so it's important to know which groups are used at your library and for which patrons. It's also important to contact Co-op Support to have your circulation policies adjusted if you want to change how items circulate to a particular group. Privilege expiration date. By default, the expiry date will be three years in the future for all permission groups, except the public library group PL New User, which has an interval of three months. Library staff can manually adjust the expiry date as needed to conform to local policy. Internet level access. The Internet Level Access field can be used by staff to manually track if patrons may access the Internet at the library. The value set doesn't affect patrons' access to the public catalog or subscribe third-party products. A default value can be set using the library setting Default Level of Patrons' Internet Access. Active Checkbox 
this checkbox is checked by default. Patrons set to inactive are not included in patron searches when the Include Inactive checkbox is unchecked on the search form. Barred checkbox. This checkbox is left unchecked by default. Patrons should only be barred in extreme situations, especially if they belong to a library that participates in reciprocal borrowing. When a patron is barred, an alert will appear when their account is retrieved, indicating that they have been barred. If staff attempt to check an item out to the patron, they will get a pop-up indicating that the patron has been barred. Is Group Lead Account checkbox. This checkbox is left unchecked by default. This feature isn't currently used by Sitka. Claims Returned Count. Evergreen will update the value in this field when staff mark items currently out to the patron as claimed returned. Staff with appropriate permissions can manually update this value. Claims Never Checked Out Count. Evergreen will update the value in this field when staff mark items currently out to the patron as claimed never checked out. Staff with appropriate permissions can manually update this value as well. The User Settings section includes settings that control notifications and use of the account. Hold Notices checkboxes. These checkboxes determine the default method for notifying the patron that a hold is ready for pickup. Patrons can change their default via My Account. Patrons can also change the notification method when they're placing the hold. When the checkboxes are checked, the associated fields are set as required. Checking the box for email sets the email address field as required. Checking the box for phone sets the default phone number field as required. Checking the box for SMS sets the default SMS text number field as required. Default phone number. The phone number entered here will be used by default as the contact number when placing a hold for the patron. If there's no number entered, the daytime phone is used instead. Patrons can update this number via My Account. Default Hold Pickup Location. This is the location where the patron usually picks up their holds. Patrons at multi-branch libraries can pick their preferred branch. Patrons at libraries participating in BC Interlibrary Connect can pick their desired library. Default SMS text number. The phone number entered here will be used as the default SMS text number when placing a hold for the patron. Patrons can update this number via My Account. Default SMS carrier. In order to receive SMS text messages from Evergreen, patrons must specify who their carrier is. Some carriers are not listed as not all carriers provide the information required to allow Evergreen to send them text messages. Patrons can update their carrier via My Account. Collections exempt. This checkbox is unchecked by default and the feature is not used in Sitka's Evergreen. Receive overdue and courtesy emails. This checkbox is checked by default. When checked, Patrons will receive email courtesy and overdue notices. Patrons can update this checkbox via My Account. If a patron opts out, they will no longer receive email courtesy or overdue notifications. Their items will still become overdue if not returned, and relevant fines or fees will still be applied. They will also continue to receive hold notifications depending on their hold notification settings. Allow others to use My Account. This feature allows patrons to indicate who is allowed to place holds, pick up holds, check out items, and or view their borrowing history on their behalf. Patrons can update who can use their account via My Account. This feature is enabled by default, but libraries can disable it by setting the library setting Allow Others to Use Patron Account Privacy Waiver to False. The majority of these settings are found in My Account under Preferences, Notifications. Allow others to use my account is found under Preferences, Search and History. The Address section includes the address or addresses for the patron. The type field is set as mailing by default. 
staff can update this text as needed. The postal code should always be entered first. Once the postal code is entered, hit the tab button or click into another field. This will prompt Evergreen to update the state field and the city field to the province or territory abbreviation and municipality associated with the postal code. The Street 1 field can then be filled in to complete the address. The Street 2 and County fields can be used as needed. The country is set to Canada by default. This can be manually updated if an address from another country is being entered. The Valid Address checkbox is checked by default. Libraries can use this checkbox to track whether or not an address is valid for the patron. This function is most useful when the library setting Invalid Patron Address Penalty is set to true. When this is set, unchecking the Valid Address checkbox and saving the account will result in an alert when opening the patron's account, a note on the Notes tab, and the address heading displaying in red. The Within City Limits checkbox can be used to track whether or not addresses fall within your area and can be used for reporting purposes. In general, Libraries use statistical categories to track service areas rather than this checkbox. Staff can use the New Address button to add additional addresses to a patron's account. Libraries can choose to require at least one address in every patron account by setting the library setting Require at least one address for patron registration to True. The Statistical Categories section is where values can be set for patron statistical categories. Statistical categories enable libraries to capture additional information about patrons that is not otherwise part of the patron account. For more information on creating and using patron statistical categories, see our video, Patron Statistical Categories. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.